There's a lot of different things that you can use to adhere decorations to your cakes. And in this video, I'm gonna give you five different ones that I use. Hi, it's Carolyn. I'm a professional cake decorator and on this channel I share my tips and tricks and ways that I bake and decorate cakes to help you along your journey. So if you'd like to join me, hit subscribe and the bell so you can get notified whenever I release a new video. And I need to come up with a new beginning and I'm trying to think of something else to say, but for now that has to work. <laughs> so I have five different mediums that I use to adhere items to cakes and we will start with number one, which is water. And yes, I say water, I'm from Philly. <laughs> I can't say water, uh, we use water. <laughs> but it's water, all right? <laughs> water is good, it has a good hold. It is not very forgiving. So once you put it on the cake, you better have it in the right spot because it's a little difficult to take it off and reposition once you do it. And it's really good for lightweight decorations, something like polka dots, something like really thin fondant adhering to buttercream or fondant. So on the middle tier, I'm, I'm putting polka dots down and I like to cut them in half because that way I can do like half circles at the top or at the bottom. I, it's just something I've always done. So I keep some whole, I cut some in half and I'm gonna put them on with water. I just feel like since it's just a thin fondant, the water um, doesn't have a problem sticking. I feel like if this was heavier, um, it might have a, it just might be, it just might not stick. <laughs> it might not hold with just water. So I'm gonna get my polka dots, figure out what colors I want in the front. I guess we'll start with purple. Now water's a little tricky. You want to make sure that you get enough on the back but if you get too much water on, it's going to slide down and you don't want that to happen. I guess I'll put one here. So you have to find the happy medium of getting it too dry, you know, not having enough water, it's gonna fall off. If you have too much, it's gonna start to slide. So I'm just basically getting a little bit. If I find that I put too much on, I just have a paper towel and I'll dab it off a little bit. And water is a little forgiving. So when I put it on, I have a couple seconds that I would be able to take this off and reposition it. However, with water, I find that the color transfers. See how I put this down here and the water is still really wet where I can adjust it. Like right away, you can adjust it and then it's gonna start to hold. Method number two, and it is the method that I use the most, is piping gel. I love piping gel because it is a little more forgiving than water. So you're able to rearrange the decorations. If you get it in a spot that you really don't like, you can peel it off and reposition it within the first uh, minute or two once you get it on there. And it does have a good hold once it sets. And also I love that it's clear. So if there happens to be any that seeps out of behind the decoration, you can't really see it. I'm gonna do this bot, this border with piping gel to show you. And just, just to show you, my cakes aren't perfect. Look, I have a little bit of um, some bubbles here. This piece came off as I was lifting it off of the board onto the cake. So there's imperfections in my cakes. It's all about hiding it. I'm gonna hide these imperfections with decorations so you're not gonna notice. So I have a little angled brush here, um, just some kind of flat brush, it doesn't really matter. And the border is gonna be the same thickness as this yellow border. Get a little bit of paint, uh, piping gel. And you have to be a little more careful when you're using pipe, piping gel, a little more exact, because it it's clear and it's a little sticky. So it, it forms a little film that you will be able to see once it dries. So it's a little more, um, you just have to be a little more precise with it where you're putting it on the cake. And again, not too thick of a coat, not too thin. You know, you just wanna have enough on there that you can get it to stick. So piping gel is forgiving for a little bit, but then it sets really hard. Not really hard, it, it really holds after um, a few minutes. And see, there's a little bit of piping gel sticking up here. So what I would like to do is take a dry paintbrush and just try to remove any excess that's sticking up above the border. Now for something like bigger decorations like this, this is an edible image. 
Um, I do have videos on how I print and use edible images and I will link that below. But this is still pliable. It's going to still form to the, to the cake. And I am going to put this on, you can use water on the back. Um, this is adhered to a piece of fondant. I don't like to stick edible images just onto cakes. If you put them on a piece of fondant, it helps prevent any wrinkling and gives it an extra layer of protection. I do have another video showing you how I, why I put uh, edible images on fondant. I can link that as well. So I'm making sure I have the front of the cake here and I'm going to put this down and this is actually sticking up over the top of the cake a little bit which I didn't want but it's okay so I'm taking a mental note I'm not going to put piping gel up at this very like quarter of an inch because that's going to be exposed getting some piping gel and what I want to do is get the edges the edges are important to get because that is the part that you really need to make sure is sealed against the side of your cake so it doesn't peel up so again, I'm not doing a very thick coat. I'm not doing a thin coat. I'm doing enough that it sticks. And I'm gonna start in the middle and then press to the sides so no air bubbles form. This is still, you could still take it off and place it back on. See, it's starting to grab some of the icing here. So you don't have too much time to fix once you put something with piping gel behind it down onto the cake. But you can, if you need to, in a pinch, take it off and redo it within like a minute or two after putting it on. Okay, now I wanna put edible image decorations on the bottom tier. So again, I'm just getting a little bit on and this bus is gonna to stick to this green part. And here I want to put this kid in front of the bus. Wait, he looks huge in, in comparison to the bus. He's never going to fit in there. <laughs> oh, well, whatever. So getting a little bit on the back, just where it's going to touch the bus. See, so I want to shift this over to the left a little bit so I can lift this up. You see how it's forgiving? And I can kind of move it around a little bit. Now I want to put the name on to him. I have to turn this so I can see it head on. His name is Kaysen. It's five letters. So I'm going to take the middle letter and center that. So the name is center. For this, when I do fondant pieces, so this is two pieces of fondant. It's yellow on white. So it's a little thicker. You can use water, um, a little bit of water. If you use too much water, it's heavier. It's going to start to slide. I prefer to use piping gel. And what I do is a little bit just enough to make it sticky. So now I can look at it. I want this, the letters a little closer together. I want to make sure everything stays center. So you see how I'm taking my thumb and shifting it. Um, with water, you wouldn't be able to do that. But piping gel is good and it has a stronghold. For things that are going on the cake board or extra little decorations, I prefer to use piping gel because it's clear and it has a really good hold. So clearly I have a curly addiction. <laughs> There's something wrong with me. I can't stop making them. And whenever I have extras, I just store these in the, um, these little containers. I have video a video on how I make these and I will link that below. So what I like to do is get a curly and put it down. And I have some piping gel on a paintbrush and I take a mental note of where it is touching the board and I just like to get a little bit of piping gel underneath it and then put it back down. Method number three. I actually like to use buttercream icing to adhere some decorations to cakes. I do this when the decorations are bigger or heavier that way I feel like, because I refrigerate all of my cakes, once I put icing behind there and pop it in the refrigerator, the icing will solidify and it's really gonna hold that decoration onto your cake. Now icing is not very forgiving because once you put icing on the back of a decoration and stick it to the cake, if you have to peel it off and remove it, the icing 
is going to transfer onto the cake and it can create a mess. So you do need to know where you are putting this decoration and make sure that it is in the area you want to put it on and you don't have to reposition it. What I really like doing icing for is um, if I'm doing decorations on decorations. So a lot of times I'll put little decorations on number toppers on the tops of my cakes and I find that using icing really helps to hold it on there. This is my American buttercream. I have a recipe for this and I will link the video below. It's in a bag with a tip number four on it and it is softened to room temperature. So I wanna put this, this little guy over here. So I wanna take a note that this part up top and over here is gonna stick out over the cake. So I just wanna get a little loop on the back. So I don't wanna to put too much cause I don't want it seeping out as I press it against the side of the cake and then hold it until it feels like it's not moving. Method number four is using melted candy melts or chocolate to adhere the decorations to your cakes. Now this method is really good, however, it is not forgiving. It creates a mess and you can't really reposition it once you put it on there without uh, ruining the cake or messing up the buttercream or the fondant that you're sticking it to but it has a fantastic hold because once that chocolate sets and solidifies, it's really gonna hold that decoration onto the cake. However, if you are, I really only do chocolate in the cooler months. If it is warm out, just be, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> keep in mind, the chocolate may melt if it's sitting outside and then the decorations are gonna start drooping. And that happened to me before. <laughs> I did a cake for a football player, um, an Eagles football player. I went to a party and they actually set the cake <laughs> right next to where the food was being served. I'll, I'll put a picture of the cake here. It was for John Runyon and it was pretty awesome. But I noticed that as the party went on, the chocolate behind the little, uh, the wings or whatever on the helmet started to melt and they started falling down the cake. Oops. So yeah, that's something to be aware of when using chocolate. All right, so what I like to do is put this up. First of all, I put those candy melts in a plastic container and melted them in the microwave at 20 second intervals and stirred until they were completely melted. And I'm gonna hold this little guy. I have a paintbrush so I can paint the chocolate on. I'm gonna hold him up against where it's going to stick. And I think I want him like that. So the only parts that are going to need chocolate is this part, what is that, headphones? <laughs> this part where the headphones is, this tip of the hand, and this foot. So when I turn it over, I can see that I need chocolate here, here, and here. So I'm gonna get some chocolate on this paintbrush and get a little bit in all the places that I, it's going to stick to that number one. Now, you don't want too much on because it's gonna to start to seep out and chocolate can be a little bit of a mess, but it is a good hold. So I'm gonna have a dry paintbrush handy so I can brush away anything that seeps out. I'm pushing the wet chocolate up against the number topper. I have to turn it towards me so I can see it. And now, when you push chocolate on, you need to make sure you hold it in place until it sets. That's the thing that could be kind of a pain in the butt about chocolate. So while it's setting, we can remove the excess chocolate. So if you can see here, some chocolate is sticking out. That's why I have this dry paintbrush and carefully wiping it off and wiping it on a paper towel. You can see a little bit of it, a little bit of it sticking out here, not a big deal. So I like to use the same color chocolate as the fondant I'm sticking it to. And there's using chocolate. And the fifth and final medium that I use to adhere decorations to cakes, and I use it all the time and I love it, is shortening, Crisco shortening. And I love it because you can move the pieces around and rearrange them as much as you need to. So I have to look at my notes because I have a lot written down on here. 
for shortening, it is the most forgiving. And because of that, it does not have a very strong hold. So I don't like to do it for decorations that are going to be sitting up on the cake, which can eventually slide down or decorations that are going to be too heavy. So I do it for borders a lot. I actually just posted a video of me doing a name band border and I use Crisco behind it because once I put the band on the cake, I'm able to kind of move it into the correct position. And Crisco is great for that. If you put water behind it, once it sticks to, once it sticks to the cake, it's a little difficult to, to move it around. So Crisco is great for borders. Um, also, if I'm using a border that is not edible, I just did a cake not too long ago that had a disco dust border on it. And the disco dust is really glittery and it's not edible. So I do that and I tell the customer, pull that border off before you cut it and serve it. And also what I'll use Crisco for is if I am not sure where to put a certain decoration on a cake and I wanna see what's gonna look better, I'll put a little Crisco behind it and stick it to that part of the cake, take a step back, look at it and be like, no, I want it somewhere else, peel it off and put it somewhere else. But just remember, it does not have a very strong hold. So something that needs a stronger hold, I would recommend using water or piping gel or one of the other medium. It's not a strong hold. So if you put it on something that's higher up on a cake, it, it could start to sink. So this is a bottom border going on a cake. And what you can do, I'm, I'm just gonna paint this on the cake, but if you prefer, I find it to be a little sloppier, you can flip it over and paint Crisco along the whole entire um, part of the border and then put it on. But I'll show you the way that I prefer to do it. So I have my cake here. Just took it out of the refrigerator. The icing is solid. I refrigerate all of my cakes, so it's not gonna get messed up when I uh, put the borders or decorations on. This is the front of my cake. I marked with some marker on the board. So I'm gonna turn around to the back of the cake and just take a paintbrush and make a little mark. That way I know where the seam is going to be. I'm gonna get some Crisco or some kind of shortening on my paintbrush and paint where I want the border to go. Now I know that the border is no higher than two and a half inches high, and I'm just making a mental note. I mean, if you really wanna take the time and measure two and a half inches, you can hold a ruler here as you're, as you're painting this to make sure that you don't go that high. However, shortening is, um, it dissolves, you can wipe it away. It's not like piping gel, which you would be able to see a strong shine. So just, painting this on, trying to keep it below where I think the border is going to be. And then I can just easily remove any excess that shows um, once I put the border on. And I'm getting a nice light coating on here, not too thick, just enough to help it to stick. Now I want to go back to where I made the lines, the little marks with my paintbrush so I know where the back is. All right, I have my border. This is mixed with Tylos. I mixed it with Tylos so I can easily handle it without it falling apart so it's gonna hold its shape. It's not too stretchy. I'm gonna start where that dotted line is and just start to press this against the Crisco on the side of the cake. Now, I just wanna take my hands or a fondant smoother or something and smooth it against the side, making sure that it's totally adhered to the side. And what you can do it's not really necessary, but if you want, you can lift up any part that doesn't have any Crisco behind it and get a little behind there and stick it back down. So in, in the case, if you have something that's starting to peel away from the cake, some kind of decoration or border, if this was just um, falling back and wasn't sticking, just get a little more behind it and stick it down. And then I just want to cut a seam here, so I'm going to overlap it. And where it overlaps and meets at the top, I'm just going to take an X-Acto knife and cut all the way down through both pieces and then just remove this piece in the back and press the pieces together to create a little seam. And I'll take a fondant smoother and just really press this down against the side of the cake. So hopefully that was easy to understand. And I'm gonna put the finished product, the picture of the cake that I was decorating in the video over here. And originally I didn't want to post me doing it on a cake because I know people are gonna be like, oh, how did you make that cake? Can you post a tutorial? And um, I basically have tutorials posted on my channel which you would be able to make this entire cake. I have the striped topper, the stripe number topper tutorial. I have a tutorial on how to print edible images and uh, put them on fondant and put them on your cake. 
I have a tutorial on how to stack cakes, on how to ice cakes, on how to make the curly cues on there, and how to make fondant names. So I will link all of that below too in case you wanted to see how I do any of the techniques that I did on this cake. So do you use any other mediums to adhere your decorations to cakes? If you do, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to know because maybe there's something that I'd like to try or something that I forgot to tell you guys. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them below. You can follow me on my socials. And I have my website. Everything is listed in the description below as well. And if you want to stick around, you can watch these two videos next and hit the subscribe button and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.